Hi. Welcome to Anaprime Recap. Humanity has been driven from Earth and now has a plan to take its planet back from Godzilla's domain. We are in the 2017 movie, Godzilla, Planet of the Monsters. In the 20th century, humanity witnessed its own extinction, several monsters began to appear all over the planet, and wherever they went, they left a trail of mass destruction. However, one creature stood out among them all, his powers and his strength were uncommon, he was identified by humans as Godzilla. The army used all of its weaponry in an attempt to annihilate its greatest enemy, but not even the thousands of guided missiles or the 150 nuclear bombs were able to stop it. Amidst the chaos and destruction, two alien races arrive on Earth to offer help. They were identified as the Exif and the Bilisaludos, and the conditions for their assistance to the human race were that the inhabitants of the Blue Planet would convert to the Exif religion and accept the migration of the Bilisaludos to planet Earth. With all terms accepted, the three species came together and managed to create the ultimate weapon to eliminate the biggest threat, they named the project as Mecha Godzilla, an artificial weapon designed solely for the purpose of protecting the planet from Godzilla. However, with the frequent attacks of the monster, the project was destroyed before it could even be activated, and the only solution for the three species was to abandon planet Earth completely. On the day of the total evacuation, Haru Sakari and his grandfather managed to get on one of the space shuttles, and traveled to the ship Eritrum, 60% of humanity was eliminated, and the survivors of the three species lived together on Eritrum. However, the conditions for survival on the spaceship were extremely critical, everyone had to starve, suffer from a lack of water, and adapt to a new, extremely limited space. In the face of this, some survivors went mad and some chose to end their own lives rather than live in these limited conditions. Twenty years after Godzilla took over the entire planet Earth, Captain Haru locks himself in a space shuttle that was parked inside the large ship, he issues a communique to all the survivors, warning that he will destroy the entire place with a bomb. The boy has discovered that the Central Committee has created an emigration project to another planet, but the group chosen to reach the surface of Tau E consists solely of old and sick people. With this in mind, Haru believes it is a plan to reduce the population due to lack of resources. Several soldiers surround the place where the boy is and he receives a transmission from his grandfather, saying that he wants to be part of the crew that will go to Tau E and he is not being forced to do anything, he has already reached the limit and could not live in that situation anymore. Faced with his grandfather's answer, Haru surrenders and is detained by security guards. Once in the cell, he is able to observe the space shuttle that takes the crew to the planet Tau E. However, the survivor's transport is destroyed before it even reaches the planet's surface. The boy is distraught by the event, after all, he had just lost his grandfather, his only relative among all the survivors. A few hours later, Haru is visited in his cell by Metfis, an exif priest, who illegally gives the protagonist some data about Godzilla. Haru asserts with conviction that there is some way to defeat that monster, he remains optimistic about returning to Earth once again, while all the other survivors wish to forget what they witnessed on that world. Meanwhile the Central Committee discusses the next actions they will take, According to some calculations the Exif species has come to the conclusion that the probability of them finding a habitable planet in 20 years is 0.1%. The group also comes to the hypothesis that they will not be able to survive in those conditions for another 8 years, so they begin to study the possibility of returning to Earth. However, they would not know if the place would still be habitable, after all, thousands of years have passed if compared to the time they have been in the spaceship. In the middle of the meeting, one of the superintendents informs them that a lot of classified data has been leaked, so that all crew members would have access to extremely important information about Godzilla. As the survivors comment on the new information, Metfis meets with Mulu, a crew member of the Bilisaludo species, they lament that their plans have failed in the past, both the attempt to bring a new religion to humans and the creation of Mecha Godzilla. The duo realizes that humans no longer have so many options to continue surviving, as a result, they deduce that very soon they will return to Earth to try to confront Godzilla once again. At this point, Admiral Umberto Mori asks the whole team to start preparing, because they are going to take the ship Eritrum to the vicinity of the Earth, and this is a dangerous operation, after all, all the power of the gravitational coils will be used to make a jump into a spacefold. By using 117% of the ship's coils, the survivors finally make it to Earth orbit, the entire crew is happy to see the clouds covering the sky and the blue of the oceans again, Admiral Umberto is warned that at some point, the humans will do some revolting to get back to their planet anyway. Umberto understands this pessimistic view, but for the time being he issues an order for some drones to be sent to the surface of the Earth to collect information and obtain new data. And it was from this, that the whole committee was shocked by a new discovery. Through Drone 6, it was possible to calculate that 10,000 years have already passed on Earth, in the face of this, 
A vast fog has taken over much of the planet, they hypothesize that Godzilla is no longer alive due to the climatic conditions. However, the drone catches a large atomic wave and stops working soon after. The humans can hear a roar just before the drone is completely destroyed. From this, the committee discovers that Godzilla is still alive, after all that sound of the creature was unmistakable. At a new meeting, the three species discuss what the next step will be to return to Earth. Before that, some hypotheses are raised to find out how Godzilla survived for more 10,000 years, some theories raise the hypothesis that he slept for a long period, on the other hand the creature could have reproduced and today this monster is one of the descendants of humanity's greatest enemy. And finally, the three species suspect that Godzilla may be immortal, at which point Metfis says he knows who was responsible for leaking the monster's new data to all crew members, but he says he will tell only if the commanders release Haru. The committee then discovers that the young man was responsible for distributing the information to the entire crew. The protagonist is released immediately and joins the meeting with the commanders and the admiral. He states that he has a plan to eliminate Godzilla. Haru explains that the creature has a single weak point, but he doesn't know where it is located. He says that the moment the monster releases its roar, it ends up undoing its invisible shield that protects it from any attack. In light of this, Haru explains that they need to exploit this moment of vulnerability, and to do so they can insert an EMP probe into Godzilla's weak point. Only then can the monster be destroyed from the inside out. The Admiral says that this is complete madness, because they would go into direct combat against the creature, he says that he would not put the lives of all the survivors at risk, in all there are 4,000 crew members. However, one of the captains asks how many people will be needed to carry out the operation, Haru informs him that he will need a team of combat engineers, infantry and special forces, in total there would be 600 people. Eventually, Haru's plan is accepted and a large group is formed to proceed to Earth and annihilate Godzilla. Several ships leave Eritrum and head for the mission, the protagonist goes aboard with Metfis and Elliot, one of the boy's colleagues. Before long, the ships enter the Earth's atmosphere, all of them manage to land safely, but the ship Mulu was in with his crew suffered problems before landing. They identified that something had caused a large scratch on the fuselage. On the ground, Haru explains how the whole operation will go, he says that first some traps will be set in the field, then the first team that encounters Godzilla will open fire with the special forces. The first objective will be to attack him and make him change course, so that they can more clearly analyze the electromagnetic waves that are surrounding Godzilla's body. From this, they will be able to identify which organ is responsible for generating the shield on his body, and then destroy it. Finally, the group has the important mission of leading the monster to the trap site, and by doing so, they will be able to delay it so that the artillery can open fire at close range. At this point, Martin Lazzari, a member of the special squadron, asks the sergeant to create a reconnaissance group. Martin says that communication is key and they should explore to see if there is anything that could interfere with the progress of the operation. The sergeant agrees and Haru also volunteers to go along, but he is on parole, so Sergeant Yuko Tani will be his escort. The group begins to explore the forest very carefully, because all the plants have been modified over time and due to the radiation are completely lethal. The slightest damage to the protective clothing can cause anyone to lose their life. During the exploration, Yuko talks to Haru and again questions him about the attitude he took against the immigration project. The girl says that her grandfather was also on the ship and suspects that this was really a plan to eliminate the elders. The protagonist replies that he doesn't want to believe that the Central Committee did something like that, because that would be a great betrayal of his own comrades, he states that he has no desire to revolt against humans, because his only enemy is Godzilla. The group then comes to an area of ruins, where humans lived before everything happened, some flowers managed to be preserved even after the global collapse, Haru is thrilled to see this, after all, they should never have left their home planet. Meanwhile, the camp where some units were is the target of a devastating attack by flying creatures named servants, who destroy various machines and equipment, as well as eliminating several survivors who were there. The humans open fire on the creatures and manage to stop the enemy attack, the group led by Martin returns to camp and everyone observes the scene of destruction that the monsters have caused. The group observes the body of one of the creatures and manages to collect a sample. In the lab, Martin comes to the conclusion that the servants have similar genetic material to Godzilla, so they had a degree of familiarity. When they also analyze the sample of the plants in the forest, they come to the conclusion that they have been modified over time and have developed a metallic thickness, similar to servants. Based on this, the crew comes to the conclusion that the forest itself is the cause of the fog on Earth. Martin informs him that the only way to end the fog would be to burn down the entire forest. Elliot says that the plan has already failed completely and in view of the catastrophic scenario, the right thing would be to return to Eritrum. Haru confronts him stating that they can't give up, 
Elliot replies that the group has already had several casualties and so far they haven't even met Godzilla. He explains that the best way out would be to inhabit the moon and extract as many resources as possible from Earth. In the meeting room, Metfees meets with Haru and Elliot. It is discussed that in order to advance to the other group of the expedition, they will need to pass through the territory where Godzilla usually inhabits, but direct combat against the monster would be the worst possible choice, so they must proceed with great caution. All units are informed of the attack that occurred with Group A and therefore need to retreat to the rendezvous point, where they will return together to the Eritrum ship. Haru's group heads to the checkpoint, but to do so they must enter Godzilla's territory. In a few minutes, the unit detects a large sound wave and identifies the presence of the monster in the area, they try to divert the route, but the main ship is unable to perform the displacement and ends up crashing in the middle of the forest. Panic begins to take over everyone's mind, Metfis frees Haru from his restraints and tells the boy to use everything he knows to get them out. Haru then uses a smaller ship and advances against Godzilla. He fires several times at his greatest enemy, but fails to get the monster to activate his electromagnetic shield. Martin watches the whole fight and deduces that with that insignificant firepower, the creature would never activate its protection. Haru asks Martin to monitor Godzilla's electromagnetic frequency as it carries out its attack, the protagonist takes his ship to the highest point he can reach and moves forward at high speed firing several shots at the monster. Suddenly, Martin also appears in control of a robot ship and starts firing several times at the creature, its firepower is greater and this has attracted Godzilla's attention. The monster concentrates atomic energy on its back and fires a powerful beam at Martin. The monster's offensive was recorded, but in exchange, Martin lost his life so that everyone could obtain new information. After this great loss, Godzilla goes on his way as usual, and the survivors remain paralyzed watching the scene of destruction caused by humanity's greatest enemy. A few hours later, Admiral Umberto contacts Metfis. The EXIF reports on the loss of Martin and how he was a hero even in his last moment of life. The Admiral says that Metfis is the new commander of the operation and everyone must follow his orders. Later, the EXIF gathers all the survivors of Group A and informs them that he has an announcement. He says that he has just been promoted to commander of the operation on Earth, but this is far removed from his assignment, which is to be a priest, and therefore someone with the characteristics of a true captain should take his place and guide the group to victory against Godzilla. Metfis tells them that the new commander will be Haru Sakari. The boy tells his companions that they must not retreat at this moment, for their ancestors fought so that they could have this unique chance. The protagonist states that the age of Godzilla will come to an end and all humans can have their planet back. After this, the boy confirms with all the leaders the proper communication points that will be placed on the battlefield, the distance of the attacks, and the positioning of the traps. Haru tells Mulu that the enemy's weak point is in the dorsal fin, for this reason they must concentrate on the close-range attack, luring him into the line of fire so that he can reach the valley, where all the traps are positioned. A few hours later, the operation against Godzilla begins, several groups gather and fly together in combat ships. Within minutes the exact location of the enemy is detected. The monster is in the forest area and quickly notices the arrival of intruders, the group advances against the threat and performs a series of shots, some soldiers are eliminated when they come into contact with the enemy, but the plan is still in progress. Godzilla rages when he is hit, he charges his energy and fires a powerful beam at his opponents, much of the squadron manages to dodge, but still some casualties are detected. At this point, Mulu tries to find a point to concentrate all the attack power, but the squadron is surprised by the arrival of a group of servants on the battlefield, they now try to defend themselves from the surprise attack and reposition themselves against Godzilla. Several people are eliminated with the unexpected counter-offensive, but a part of the squadron manages to fight them off and with Mulu's orders, they climb to the highest point to focus their firepower against Godzilla, completely ignoring the servants. The attack continues, but the monster fights back with another atomic blast, destroying some of its opponents. Haru contacts Mulu and gets information about the combat. The Bilisaludo informs him that there have been 10 losses in the squadron, but if they continue at this rate of attack they will be able to take the target to the meeting point. However, Mulu says that the ammunition and fuel are already running out. The protagonist says that if it continues like this night will come and the scenario will become even worse, for this reason, he asks six elite pilots to get into the big ships and head for the front line. Haruo explains that they will have the important mission of creating a path for Godzilla to follow, the group will have to bomb it and destroy everything in the monster's path. The orders are followed by the elite pilots, although with extreme trepidation, after all, the landing craft are the ones responsible for taking the crew back to Eritrum. Meanwhile, Mulu's squadron continues the fire attack on the target, even with the several casualties, humanity does not retreat, 
It just moves forward and attacks with everything it has. The landing craft are ordered to release the bombs, and within moments, their impact on the ground creates a detour. Godzilla begins to walk towards the traps. However, the monster becomes enraged and fires his beam at one of the aircraft. Adam, one of the elite pilots, realizes that the monster is looking in his direction, he immediately takes an emergency measure and manages to eject before he is totally blown up by the creature. After releasing the bombs, the squadron continues its attack at full speed, Haruo is informed that the monster is already approaching the meeting point and should act quickly so as not to miss the opportunity. The protagonist gets into an exoskeleton, made especially for close-range combat. Alongside Yuko and other survivors, they advance toward their posts. In a few minutes Godzilla reaches the trap and, at the same instant, it is activated. The monster was in a valley and several bombs were placed on the mountains, with this, a big explosion occurs and a cave in begins, the creature ends up being trapped by the debris and temporarily immobilized. At this point, the exoskeletons begin their attack on the creature, several shots are fired until the monster's shield is finally activated. Haruo says that the goal is to completely destroy the monster's defense in order to insert the EMP probes inside. Within minutes, the shield is completely destroyed, but Godzilla still had the strength to concentrate its energy, making it impossible for humans to approach its surface. However, Haruo ignores the consequences and heads towards his greatest enemy. The young man asks the squadron to continue the attack and not to mind him, in this instant, the protagonist finally manages to insert the probe inside the monster, followed by the entire squadron who accurately accomplish the insertion of the EMP. Haruo asks everyone to move away from the target, they realize that the probes are penetrating the monster's interior and will soon reach the deepest point of its body, a few minutes later, a gigantic explosion happens from the inside out. After the shockwave, the crew reunites and claims that it was finally the end for the terrible Godzilla. Yuko meets up with Haruo and sees that everyone who was in the exoskeletons is fine. The group investigates the wreckage of the monster and comes to the conclusion that he really was an insane creature. Adam talks to Haruo and says that that Godzilla doesn't even look like the same Godzilla that was on Earth 20 years ago, the protagonist questions this statement and says that even though this is not the Godzilla from years ago, this operation has shown that humans have the power and the ability to face it over and over again. Adam says that the most logical answer to this would be that that defeated Godzilla was a descendant of the previous one, because it would be impossible to live thousands of years in that catastrophic scenario. At that moment, everyone feels a large vibration coming up from the ground, as they try to pick it up, they realize that a heat wave is coming closer and closer to the surface, the temperature is several times higher than Godzilla's. At that moment a huge explosion occurs, and slowly an old figure is revealed to everyone, the real Godzilla appears before the squadron. He is more than 300 meters tall and the heat he emits is unbelievable. Metfiz watches him from afar and says that the king of destruction has reached the surface, the monster causes enormous damage just by using its tail, all that is left for the survivors is to escape from that place. Some do not make it to the ships in time and are left behind. The creature watches the humans move and fires a sonic wave that destroys all the aircraft in a few seconds. Godzilla also causes a gigantic wave of destruction using his tail, everyone suffers from the immense impact, and a veritable inferno breaks out in the middle of the forest. Haruo is able to observe his greatest enemy through the wreckage of his ship and vows to annihilate him by any means necessary. Do you think mankind will really succeed in eliminating Godzilla? So, what did you think of this anime? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like it and subscribe for more anime recaps. See you next time.